Nightshade. Nightshade. Sleazy and Pure. You're watching Cheap Shot Entertainment. Hello and welcome once again to Cheap Shot Entertainment. I am your host Luke and you are the Cheap Shot Nation. And we're going to take you through everything that happened in Sheffield on the 31st of March 2019. It was for Southside Wrestling representing with my t-shirt. Uh, it was three t-shirts for £20, very reasonable price. Split that with my friends. And we all got a t-shirt each, which was really cool. And also very nice colours as well, not just your standard black t-shirts over there. Uh, the show was called Menace to Society, and it was number number nine. So I am reading my Roman numerals completely wrong. Uh, the doors were at 4.45pm, and the show started at 5.30pm. And uh, yeah, we've got a good rundown of, of stars here in, in Southside Wrestling in this show. So uh, a couple of couple of people that didn't realise were going to be there, a couple of people on the poster, things like that. Uh, but it was a, it was a, it was a good show. And I've said this many many times. It doesn't destroy my love of wrestling or appreciating what these guys and girls do in the ring um, personally. But I could see how. A crowd can make or break a performance or, um, you know, distract someone's enjoyment of what's being put in front of them. Uh, the crowd were very quiet. I don't know if that's because everyone was quite cold. I was quite cold um, because it was March and obviously we've been having really weird weather. I don't know whether it was just the fact that the, the building was cold. And they kept people quiet, but uh, it would be interesting going again to see if the atmosphere is any different on a sort of warmer day when people are, you know, a bit more, have a bit more energy, so to speak. Um, like I say, it didn't destroy my enjoyment of the show, um, and it was a really good show. The first show was excellent, this was really good. I would say that the She's Still or That show trumped this one ever so slightly. In terms of my um, in terms of my reviews, um, but it was still a really good show. And twenty pound on the front row is still um, sort of a, a standard price for um, wrestling, independent wrestling here in the UK. Uh, so yeah, let's take you through everything that happened in the show. We've got some doozies of matches for you, so we hope you enjoy those. And obviously, you can join us on. Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and we'll do all the YouTube stuff at the end. So enjoy, enjoy the video and uh, we'll see you at the first match. Your first match of the evening show for Menace to Society number 11 featured Joseph Connors, the Nottingham native who trained with House of Pain Wrestling, who is a trainer with House of Pain Wrestling, I believe still, uh, with Sticks, who would appear later on in the show. Um, and he's going against Kelly Six, my nephew Martin's, uh, one of my nephew Martin's favourite wrestlers, actually, uh, Kelly Six. Playing a very different character in this one, actually. Joseph Connors is the good guy, people were cheering him. I could do that, I could deal with that, I got a high five off him, that was pretty cool. Um, and Kelly Six playing like a drunken character, which is a mm, bit on the nose for, you know, wrestling and things like that. But, uh, you know, he played it well. I'm sure there was just water in his in his hip flask. Um, but that would ultimately be his downfall. Uh, you know, he spun around a few times by Joseph Connors and slapped up the side of the head. And that obviously made him feel a bit, a bit queasy. Bit queasy, got out the ring, looked like he was going to vom, but uh, no, he held it in, he held it back, and uh, well, it didn't do him any good because uh, Joseph Connors got the win with the Don't Look Down finisher and the pin. So, your winner in this first match is opening contest, quite a short opening contest, bearing in mind the two characters who told the story 
and it told the story very, very well. I was like, because I've only seen Joseph Connors on TV, on NXT UK, um, I wasn't prepared to cheer him. But, who? You know, I'm from Derby, he's from Nottingham. I'll cheer that, you know. Um, if it was football, I wouldn't, obviously. But, wrestling, I can get behind my hometown boy, so to speak. My home... Uh, counties boy, no home counties a bit further down, anyway Joseph Connors is your winner with the don't look down and the pin over Kelly Six, Kelly Six wanders to the back um, probably to be sick and uh, have a lie down have a nice lie down Kelly because you've just lost this match so we next get a tag team a, fee a women's tag team match uh, between Zaya Brookside and Shax, who were supposed to have a match against each other in this show, but they decided on the She's Still All That show that they would form a tag team and go against Pretty Little Pillars, which were Ruby and the other one who had a, had a match earlier on. Ivy, that's the one. I knew, knew, knew it was in there somewhere. Ruby and Ivory, also known as the Pretty Little Pillars. Um, obviously, they're a formidable tag team in the women's division on South Side. Zy Brookside and Shax took together at the last minute because Zy Brookside made the save earlier on in the in the shows. In the she's all still all that show, um, and we now have a tag team match. So. Um, obviously the bad guys here, the heels, were Pretty Little Pillars. Zaya Brookside was getting cheered in this one. She was getting booed when she was, when she was against Jade, which is quite funny. Because uh, Jade's a staple favourite in Southside Wrestling. And uh, yeah, she's with Shax. You know, uh, love Shax. She's brilliant. Every time I've seen her, she's put on a great show. And uh, yeah, she's she's just really really good. And obviously, Zaya Brookside speaks for herself. Um, she's in NXT UK, so um, yeah, you're always going to get a good match out of these two, regardless of who they go against. Incidentally, I do like Ivy. I've not seen much of Ruby um, in the wrestling ring. I believe I have seen her though, um, but just not very often. So. Uh, yeah, the uh, the match would be your typical tag team match. Isolation of Shax for quite a lot of the match, uh, with Ruby and Ivy beating her up for quite a significant amount of time. Uh, Shax would eventually get the hot tag, and uh, Zy Brookside would come in clean house. And um, yeah, this is where the the momentum shifted to Zaya Brookside and Shax. Shax would eventually pick up the win with the swinging DDT on Ruby. Um, just to swing the leg, bang, into the floor and uh, the pin. So Shax would get the pin. One, two, three. Ruby, uh, Ruby and Ivy live to fight another day. Shax and Zaya Brookside are your winners in this match. So for a tag team that's been chucked together at the last minute, they did a really good job of uh, taking care of the staple tag team of the Pretty Little Pillars. And you know they're a staple tag team because they have a name for their tag team. Because, uh, you know, they've been together for a little while now. And you can see why they've got good tag team chemistry. Uh, but it was always... If if I was a betting man, obviously I wouldn't bet on wrestling because we all know it's predetermined. But if I was, I'd probably put my money money on Zaya Brookside and Shax anyway, based on the fact that it was a last minute uh, tag team match that was called for by Zaya Brookside, and obviously Zaya Brookside is there uh, for the fans to see someone who's on tap which is nice. Uh, but your winners are Shax and Zaya Brookside. Your next match is a, a bit of a grudge match here. It would be Styx, who is one half of the Southside Tag Team Champions. They took the titles off of Sean Custom. I'm not sure who his tag team partner was. Um, and like I say, a bit of a grudge match here. One-on-one -on -one grudge match. Uh, I know 
Styx is in a tag team with Chris Tyler, and they took the championships last month. Uh, but Styx doesn't turn up, and I messaged him earlier on in the day. I wondered why he didn't uh, didn't message me back. Still, you know, we have some decent conversations over over messenger and things. Um, and obviously, I do a little bit of work for. Uh, House of Pain wrestling when they come come over to Hina. Incidentally, they are at Hina on the 14th of April, so not long away there. So if you're in the area, get your bottom down to the William Gregg Leisure Centre in Hina and watch some cracking wrestling. I'm not there. I'm in Blackpool uh, watching uh, watching football and then going on the Pleasure Beach all day on Sunday. Because um, I've already got my wristband for the rides, so I'm hoping that the weather is going to be good. Anyway, uh, Sticks would appear on the Tron and says he's not going to come up. He's not going to turn up. He's not going to turn up until the championships are on the line, until he has to turn up, basically. Um, so we then have Sean Custom in the ring, uh, waiting for... A match, and uh, it turns out that Big Guns Joe, who we have seen at New Generation Wrestling, uh, answers the call. Uh, Joe's getting quite a lot of cheers in this match. He's probably not quite accustomed to the cheers, considering he's going against Sean Custom, who's quite big on the independent circuit in the UK. Um, I was cheering for Joe. I, I quite like Joe's character. He's quite a, quite a, a short lad, uh, but he comes out wearing the weight belt and he's like, and he's dead funny. Uh, but I, I, big guns, Joe. Uh, it's one to watch, definitely. Um, very, very funny, uh, and quite, quite good, uh, really, uh, the technical side of the wrestling stuff. So, uh, yeah, very much one to watch. There, he did give his give his all against Sean Custom, but he would succumb to the custom bomb at the end of the match and that would put him away for the one two three your winner in this match is sean custom in what was a, another impromptu match um uh, big guns joe filling in for sticks when he said he wasn't going to bother turning up so your winner in this match is sean custom so your next match is another women's match it features kanji who we saw earlier in the day at she's still all that and she was in the same match as the lady who she's going to go against here in millie mckenzie suplex millie who got the win earlier in the day in that triple threat match um so we get another match from these two um Kanji's got a little bit of an injury, pick carrying a bit of an injury, but she doesn't show it here in um, in Southside Wrestling. And uh, yeah, she does pick up the win in this one. A very evenly matched match. Uh, very evenly matched ladies here. Two women who uh, have very similar style. Suplex Millie would show what she's popular for by hitting a couple of German suplexes on Kanji, um, sort of knocking knocking her senseless a little bit, you know, landing on the back of your head and things like that. It's not great when you're in a in a fight for your life, so to speak. Uh, it would be Kanji who would come on, come out on top in this one uh, with her usual high flying offense and quite innovative as well. At one point she ran across the ropes and did a flip and like an arm drag thing um, off the ropes quite um, quite luchador-esque is kanji and she's only getting better and she's still quite young as well which is very impressive and she's shooting for the stars already uh, but kanji would beat millie mckenzie suplex millie uh, with a standard sunset flip pin uh, after all those high-flying moves and suplexes and and things like that, um, and and they did fly in this match actually. Um, come to think of it, they did fly to the outside um, at one point. But it would be a sunset flip pin that would get Kanji the win. Hashtag pin for the win. Sunset flip pin for the win. Um, your winner in this one is Kanji. 
uh, in a in a very hard fought contest from the women here in this match. Your winner once again is Kanji. Your next match features two NXT UK wrestlers in Dan Maloney who was on the first ever UK Championship tournament. He's now a staple in NXT UK and Primate who's just come into NXT UK and teaming with the wild boar Mike Hitchman um, in what is a fantastic tag team if you've not seen these two tag together they're brilliant uh, so animalistic in their in their execution of their tag moves they've tagged together before probably put together because of the animalistic styles obviously you've got wild boy who stomps around and he's got the black eyes and stuff and then you've got primate who wears the monkey mask uh, sorry the gorilla mask out of the ring quite and he's got a massive beard Kudos to the beard, Primate. Brilliant. Massive beard. Anyway, um, it would be uh, Dan Maloney who would pick up the victory in this one. It was quite a hard-fought contest. It was very respectful. They had a handshake at the beginning of the match as well. Um, just to show that how much they respect each other. There was... Um, Lots of bouncing off of each other, trying to outdo each other, um, like two trains colliding and none of them shifting. Uh, the immovable object versus the something force. Is, it, is that the way the gorillas described Hulk and Andre? Just, oh, let's just say it was like Hulk and Andre. Um, and um, yeah, it, there was a lot of that. It spilt outside the ring. The referee let it go quite a lot um, because it was quite fun uh, watching these two guys just run at each other and not get anywhere. Um, but it would be Dan Maloney with a submission move that would pick up the victory here. Um, it would be the ankle lock um, almost making Primate tap. He nearly got to the rope. Dan Maloney pulled him back, cinched it in. Went down to the floor, leg grapevine, uh, in the ankle lock submission. Um, there's no getting out of that for Primate, no dragging to the ropes or anything like that. Um, that is a big chap holding on to your leg and your ankle that you've got to drag to that rope. And when you're in that much pain with the ankle lock, that ain't going to happen. We've seen it many times with Kurt Angle and Jack Swagger or Jake Hager as he is known now um, so yeah Primate would eventually tap out and Dan Maloney would pick up the victory in this match and you would think that would put him in contention for a championship match further down the line in Southside should he appear again at Southside Wrestling which I get the feeling that a lot of these NXT guys and girls do which is quite cool actually um, yeah, I like that. I do like that a lot. Anyway, that would lead us into the interval and we're going to move on to the next match after I've had a cup of tea uh, and a little drink. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the first part of the video and we're going to go into the second part with the main event included. There would be three championship matches coming up in the second half. So, lots to look forward to, right here on Cheap Shot Entertainment. So, your first of the three second half matches, all featuring championship challenges, would be the Queen of Southside Championship, and it would be defended by Shanna, who we saw at the end of She's Still All That, against Lana Austin, successfully defending her title with some dirty heel tactics, a different side of Shanna of the, uh, that the regulars of Southside Wrestling saw there. And she would be going against Jamie Hayter, who did challenge Shanna at the end of She's Still All That to a title match. And it would be set for this part of the show. So, she's going against Jamie Hayter. Um, Jamie is a funny one. She wants people to cheer but she's still got heel tendencies. But by the end of this match, because most of the people that were at the first show or at the second show, um, there was a little bit of heat on Shanna, I've got to say, and people were 
cheering Jamie Hayter. I like Jamie Hayter. From what I've seen, I like Shanna as well. I think she's really, really good. I don't know what she does. Obviously, holding the title for 150 plus days is no mean feat uh, in terms of Southside Wrestling because the competition is very hot in Southside Wrestling. But it would be another successful defence of that Queen of Southside Championship that would, um, so Shanna would prevail, that would keep her in the. Uh, with the championship around her waist. Um, Jamie Hayter gave a good account of herself, a great match. Um, like I say, the women's matches are, uh, throughout the day have been absolutely phenomenal. Um, and uh, with uh, the main event of WrestleMania coming up, being the first ever women's match at WrestleMania is just fantastic. Great step forward for the ladies of professional wrestling. And um, yeah, uh, it would be Shanna who would pick up the victory, keeping the title around her waist. And Jamie Hayter, like I say, gave a good account of herself, but she would go down to the stunner from Shanna after beating her up quite a bit in this match. Got to be, got to be honest here. Uh, Jamie Hayter gave a very good account of herself, and I think she's she could have another championship match down the line against Shanna. And, and absolutely pick up the victory and that title. Um, so well done to both of these women for putting on a show and starting the second half. Again, it's always difficult to start the show. It's always difficult to start the second half after the interval as well. But they did a really good job, warmed up the crowd a little bit. Still a little bit flat, but um, yeah, they did a really good job. Your winner in this match is Shanna. Your next match is a European title match for Southside Wrestling Entertainment. I've not seen a European title for a good long time, so that was pretty cool. Adam Maxted is the champion, currently a different character to what we saw at New Generation Wrestling. He is playing a heel. Uh, I think he's probably more suited to being a heel. He's a bit of a pretty boy and he's got a you know, muscles and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he would be going against Senza Volto, someone who I've not seen before, but very much in the style of Rey Mysterio and the Mexican wrestlers. Apparently he is French, so that is, that's pretty cool. Uh, the only French wrestler I've seen uh, in recent memory has been uh, Rene Dupree, and he comes to Hope Wrestling quite a bit, uh, and he's completely different to what he was on WWE, but he's sound. Um, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, um, Senza Volto would pick up the victory in this match, uh, using all of his speed to his advantage, taking the uh, leg base and the power out of Adam Maxted as we went along in this match. Um, but it was Adam Maxted who would be the Ill in who would be the illustrator of his own downfall here, picking up the title from the corner, going to hit Senza Volto over the head with it. Neil stops him from doing that, grabs the title, and as uh, Adam Maxted is complaining to Neil, the referee, uh, low blow, cheap shot from Senza Volto, and as Neil's putting the belt down, he kicks him in the knackers again, and... Uh, Adam Maxted goes down, uh, gets the roll up and the pin. So he would be the illustrator of his own downfall there. Um, and he, yeah, again, it was a really good match. It was it was exciting. You got the high flying Sins of Volto against the powerful Adam Maxted. Uh, it was fun to boo Adam Maxted because. You know, he is so pretty and muscly and stuff, uh, which was quite funny. Um, so, we have a new champion, the first title change hands all day. And your new European champion is Senza Volto. I think he's going to hold that title for quite some time because he is very impressive. And yeah, it's nice to see a lucha-based wrestler, lucha-style wrestler with a title in independent wrestling. Uh, so your winner once again via the roll-up and a cheap shot to the groin is Senza Volto. 
and so your main event of the evening was for the Speed King title your champion is Ricky Knight Jr of course the brother of Paige and was featured quite heavily in the film Fighting With My Family which I still haven't seen yet and it's now gone off at the cinema but anyway um, Kip Sabian would be in this match super bad Kip Sabian and I have now downloaded his music and I can't stop listening to it. Super bad. Super bad. Anyway, um, Chief Deputy Don. Yeah, no fun. Uh, and uh, Joe Nelson. Three of the top superstars in Hope Wrestling would be here as well. Um, that was a slight change to the original card. I can't remember who the. I think it was DJ Z uh, who was scheduled to appear according to the listings uh, but we got a really good match here it was a fatal four-way um, obviously still quite difficult to keep up with all the action we got uh, flips and jumps through we got su suicide dives and things into the aisle way incidentally the setup for the show was really good as well you'll see that behind me um, on the uh, on the screen here uh, as my backdrop it was really good setup, really nice little setup, and and the venue was really good as well. It just was a bit cold. Um, anyway, um, after a lot of scrapping and um, you know, super bad doing his um, doing his introduction, and Deputy Don going stop freeze, and super bad says no, I know this is going to happen. I know what's going to happen. You're going to say freeze. I'm going to stop, and then you're going to kick me in the face. He doesn't because he preempts it, puts the microphone down and he gets kicked in the face by Ricky Knight Jr and that is how the match starts. From there we have various different iterations of the guys fighting each other. Um, didn't see much of Ricky Knight Jr in this match apart from the flippy stuff outside the ring about halfway through the match. Um, Joe Nelson did the same things. Uh, he's quite a high flyer and a really really good young wrestler uh, brought to us by Hope Wrestling in fact um, training up there and with Kips Habian actually I believe uh, anyway it would be a top rope double knees to Chief Deputy Don as Chief Deputy Don uh, was on the floor after performing his own move the, the um, springboard code breaker and uh, your winner in this match would be Kip Sabian. Now we said before the match that Kip Sabian obviously wouldn't win uh, simply because he has been picked up by AEW, uh, All Elite Wrestling, um, over in the States. Obviously he's not planning on going over there just yet. Um, so he picks up the title. He is now your new Speed King champion. And he says he wants one more match where Chief Deputy Dunn is going to be his tag team partner. Obviously these two guys have formed quite the friendship over the years. Uh, working for Hope Wrestling and various other promotions. Probably travelling up and down the roads together. Which is, which is nice. That's what um, wrestlers do. They chip in, they share rooms, they travel up and down the roads. It's not all glitz and glamour, they don't all get to travel in big fancy cars like you see on Ride Along. Um, they just get to where they've got to go, enjoy what they do and go home. And that's their weekend. But your winner in this match and new Speed King Champion is super bad Kip Sabian and so that is everything that happened at Southside Wrestling Menace to Society 9 it took place on the 31st of March 2019 at the Corporation in Sheffield like I say really nice venue a little bit cold but we can deal with that uh, perhaps go back when it's a bit a uh, bit warmer or wear a coat maybe um, but yeah, really, really good. Both shows, fantastic. The women's show 
slightly outdid the men's show for me but the men's show was really good if I was judging them back to back I would say that the women's show won just on the performances and the effort put in to put on all women's show on and get the crowd going which they did uh, the men's show I don't know if it was just because uh, people again were cold um, whether that stopped them from cheering. We were cheering, we were clapping, we were trying to get people going but there was nothing doing. Uh, I'd like to go back again when it's perhaps a little bit warmer, perhaps more people turning up and see what the atmosphere is like there. Um, but it didn't, it didn't discourage me from going back, it didn't discourage my friends from saying they wanted to go back as well and I would definitely go back and do the same thing we did this time when we stayed in a, a nice apartment for the night a decent price and spent all day in Sheffield and then all day on the following day as well which was quite nice and um, all together between the lot of us it came to about a hundred quid probably not even that um, Sheffield for the night and to have two wrestling shows um, like I say, I probably wouldn't see it on the front row, but you know, you've got to try these things. It wouldn't discourage you from doing that. But Southside Wrestling is definitely tip top for UK independent wrestling. Uh, still a bit far out for me to go to regularly, but I will definitely be going back there later on in the year, perhaps, and uh, watching another show. And uh, yeah, really, really good shows. I'll definitely suggest you go and watch Southside Wrestling. If you're in the Sheffield area, if you're a student and you're watching this or whatever, uh, go and check out Southside Wrestling. Lots of top talent there. Lots of independent talent, lots of top talent from NXT UK coming in as well. I counted no less than five uh, NXT UK superstars who've got contracts uh, over there with WWE. Uh, which was really cool. I wasn't expecting that. I'm only used to like one at a time. Uh, but then I go to independent wrestling to watch independent wrestlers uh, at the same time. But that doesn't detract from uh, what these guys and girls do. They they do these things. They show up. They they do what they do. They entertain us. And if the crowd's not behind them, you've got to feel for them. I do stage shows and if the crowd doesn't get behind me whether I'm a good guy or a bad guy then I'm wondering what I've done wrong so if you're gonna go and watch independent wrestling cheer on the lads and ladies over in the in the ring they're putting on the performance putting their bodies on the line for your entertainment cheer them boo them clap them slap them a high five do what you need to do have a bit of banter with them because they will banter back. They're trained to do that. Um, and it's all part of the fun. Have a bit of a laugh. Go and shake their hand at the end. Say thank you and do all of that as well because they really do appreciate the fans and the fact that they've come out, paid their hard earned hard money to see what they can put on in the ring in terms of a show anyway that is everything that happened at Southside Wrestling you can follow us on Instagram Twitter and Facebook don't forget to hit a don't look down on that subscription button and a double knees to the chest of that notification bell to know when we upload new content to the channel I'm really happy with my new t-shirt I will be wearing that quite a bit I think um, in coming months especially seems that it's a different colour to black when we get nice weather and uh, if you enjoyed the video give us a thumbs up hit the subscription button and uh, leave us a comment as well if you've seen Southside Wrestling leave us a comment if you was there at the show leave us a comment if you haven't seen Southside Wrestling before leave us a comment you get the idea now uh, here on Cheap Shot Entertainment we love chatting to you guys as well um, but that's it for now um, we're going to move on next show is the big one is Wrestlemania we've got TakeOver on Friday we've got Wrestlemania on Sunday check back for reviews and previews of those shows I think we're only going to be doing predictions for Wrestlemania because the show is so huge so we won't be doing video predictions for TakeOver 
um, although I don't know um, because the only time we can film it is tomorrow night uh, as we're filming this that will be a Thursday night um, so yeah we'll see what happens with that might just do it all on one show who knows anyway I will see you next time you are the Cheap Shot Nation I am your host Luke and goodbye